All right, everybody, we're here for another Rust update. But before we get into the content, one of the biggest things that people are always asking about is, are you guys going to be changing things with the guns? And it recoils specifically. So Helk has made a small little blurb here about weapon changes in the blog. Want to bring this to everyone's attention as the very first things. So they went ahead and they changed up the SAR. Helk here modified it and uh, it should be less floaty and snappy when reloading uh, because the animations have been redone and they reduced the recoil that gets added when moving while using the sap and over the next few months helk plans on looking at every single weapon and doing a pass on them all he said that includes timing handling recoil and aim cone so he's not saying it's going to be huge changes but he wants everyone to know that there will be changes and to stay tuned. So there you go, everyone. Weapons are going to be touched on and it's something being worked on in the next couple months. So there you go. All right, guys. So let's jump on into the update. We've got backpacks and the metal detector and a few other quality of life stuff and a sneak peek at the Chinese New Year stuff coming up which I believe will be in the shop next week. I uh, Don't quote me 100% on it. I don't have the date uh, specifically from the devs, but that's just when it makes the most sense. So anyways, let's start with a couple of the smaller things. Interesting. Uh, so first thing here is going to be door rotation. So if you want to place a door, instead of having to do the whole like flip around and all that, you can just simply press R. Rotate, 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 rotate. So beautiful little thing right there. Especially with, uh, I would say, garage doors, they tend to flip the weirdest. So definitely a nice little addition added on in. So with all that, we also have a change to barrels. So if we go ahead and cruise on over here to some junk piles, you'll notice barrels look very different. They've all gotten kind of HD'd up. And uh, let's see, we got like a little yellow barrel over here. So yeah, you'll notice there's some different barrel variations and they all been redone, which also means the hobo barrel itself has been redone. So it has a whole thing where it looks kind of like it's full of charcoal. And then you've just got this uh, white and gray kind of, uh, well, it's kind of like an off black, to be honest. Uh, there you go, off black, a shade of black. There we go. But the hobo barrel has been redone there. All right, so let's get to the backpacks. So if we go ahead and take a look, see, you can see my character has a backpack on. And you'll also see that it doesn't clip with weapons. So if you didn't see my last little updated video, uh, you'll see with the backpack that weapons now go along the side of it beautifully. So this is the small backpack. And with the small backpack, when you click on it here, your character kind of does a little flip. And you have your little box right here. And uh, yeah, you've got three by four. So yeah, that's a pretty nice little size starting off. And uh, it's not too bad wise, I would say, you know, 12 slots for 50 cloth and it's a default blueprint. So if we go ahead in here and type in backpack, you'll see it is 50 cloth and five sewing kits. It does require a workbench level one, but I mean, hey, not too bad, right? Definitely nice that it is a default blueprint and 30 seconds of craft isn't too bad either so then we have the military grade or large backpack this can be found in military grade boxes or higher and uh or basically anything with military loot basically and it has 28 slots so if you have a backpack and there's something in it and you switch it out you can put an empty backpack into a backpack, but you can't put a full backpack into a backpack. So if we want to take this backpack off, we can't. All we can do is drop it if it's full. Now, when you drop it, that now means that anyone can access it. Yes, this includes in a safe zone. So careful with dropping your backpack. 
Right now, that is the only downside to backpacks. They do not give you any kind of weight reduction, uh, which the devs already said they aren't going to do it that way. So uh, it looks like there may be some balance coming to it. I think they're going to see how people use them and go from there. But to open a backpack while it's on the ground, you do have to hold your use button for a few seconds there, and you will pick it up. Now, if you just want to access it, you simply click E, and there you go. And once it is empty, you can, again, just pick it up by holding E. It will auto-equip. Now, if we switch to the big backpack, you'll see we got plenty of space right there. Now, if we go ahead and put a bunch of things into it and then try to put it into a box, it won't happen. But as you'll see, the empty backpack can. So you do have to empty backpacks before you can put them away. So you can't just stuff a huge box with uh, just a backpack. You know what I mean? So that's that's the only downside to it, you know. But, I mean, that's kind of just how a backpack works in general, if you think about it. So there you go. There they are. Those are the two packs. And, uh, yeah, they both have the same pickup time, so it doesn't really matter on that. Also, to note... The diving tank is now a backpack. So, if we go ahead and empty that. Whoops. There we go. You'll see the diving tank now goes in to the backpack slot. So, the parachute, the diving tank, and the two backpacks are what we have going on for that there. And uh, we'll go ahead and take a little look-see at the backpack see the model of it that way and uh, then yeah so for Chinese New Year it looks like we have several new items first thing that has popped up is the white version of the lantern so as you see it has a white little glow to it which is quite nice And then we have two items, and one of these is the first spear skin to exist in Rust. And uh, we are in the wrong camera mode. There we go. <laughs> there we are. I'm like, why can't I inspect this spear? It worked earlier. Look at that. Beautiful. Very cool. Uh, I like the movement of the actual cloth up front. So there you go. Very first spear skin very very cool then we have the dragon launcher and man I wish the rocket launcher looks this HD and look at that examine isn't that thing just beautiful love it and if we go ahead we have to fire this thing off right I mean just have to Look at that sight, too. How cool is that effect? So it has its own custom sound, and it shoots a blast of extra fire out of the dragon's mouth at the end there. So cool. So, very, very, very awesome. Also, before we quickly get over to, to the metal detector, I want to note that the special inspect is only for the Dragon Launcher. As you'll see, the Rocket Launcher has its old inspection animation still. So that is one other thing that's really cool with this, is that it does have a custom inspect. So let's go on over here and grab us a metal detector and a shovel oh hey what there's a shovel now yes there's a shovel so where is the shovel well it seems to be an item that you can find and uh yeah it uh right now is this basically just a melee tool uh you can't learn it uh i wasn't even mentioned in the dev blog, so I'm honestly not 100% sure the shovel made it. Because they say that you can use any melee tool, but in one of the dev blog pictures, they show the shovel on the backpack. So, I, I don't know. <laughs> one way or another, uh, there, there might be this shovel now, uh, but yeah, uh, it doesn't exist in crafting and such. So, it may just be findable. But anyways, you've got your little metal detector here. 
and you'll see we've got some different lights and sounds and stuff going on so let's first take a look at it and you'll see there it is it requires workbench level one and uh, two rope 200 frags and five high quality metal um i don't <laughs> i guess rope because we don't have wires or something i i'm I, I'm not entirely sure on that one. And then if you look here, it's going to be 75 to research it, like a lot of other things in the area there. So you've got yellow lights and a sound. As the sound gets louder, the closer you're probably getting to something. The more beeps, the closer you're getting. So you can start to scan with right click. More beeps. And boom, flag popped up. So as soon as the flag pops, you can now use any melee tool, as they say. But we're gonna finish it off with a shovel here. And boom, some metal fragments. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's not always gonna be something exciting. And, uh, and that's just what it is. Now, depending on where you are, depends on the kind of loot you can get. Apparently, you know, the beach is going to be very different from what you might find alongside roads. Now, um, I, I know an AK was dug up uh, at one point, but uh, the devs did comment saying that's not going to be a thing. But as far as I can tell, there are lower tier guns in the loot table, like revolvers and such. So that's definitely a thing. But this is just kind of one of those things that's more for fun. Rust is a sandbox. So, I mean, just because this is added doesn't mean you have to use it. It's there for the people that uh, are interested in that kind of stuff. So, yeah, that's uh, basically it. Let's go take a look at some of the other stuff that the Rust team has been up to. All right, so with backpacks, we now have a new body bag. And there's some things that are worth actually paying attention to with the body bag as it has some features. First things first, this is what it looks like, right? Kind of like a satchel. But once someone has opened it to loot it and, whoops. <laughs> that was weird. Uh, once you've opened it to loot it and taken something out of it, it will now appear open. And if there's a decent amount of stuff, there'll be more things kind of laying around it. So you see how there's like a, a hand and bones and then like bullets and stuff sticking out. The less that's in it, the uh, less it will kind of show things up. I don't know if it will actively change. Yep, see? Now you can see there's almost nothing in it. And then if we put, oh, you can't really put stuff back in there, so. <laughs> but there you go, that's the new body bag. And you'll notice up on the compass, it also showed where my body is up on the compass, which is a nice little feature. So you don't just have to hold M and keep checking or place an actual waypoint to find your body. Your last body will actually have its own waypoint, which is really nice. So yeah, there it is. You don't have to actually do this anymore, which boom, is super nice. Alright guys, so that pretty much just about sums up the stuff. There are a few improvements and highlights, which I figured we could just kind of cover here real quickly. So, uh, yeah, Legacy Shelter, you can only put one now. Uh, that was on staging, it is now merged to main. Safe Zone, you now get a nice little warning that pops up on your screen if you try to sleep in it to let you know. So that's a nice thing for new players. Uh, Compass, Death Marker, we already just showed you that. Uh, we showed you the rotating doors. Repair costs, uh, like auto turrets used to be crazy expensive, uh, and now that is fixed. And they've added 10 hours of duration to ripeness. So from four hours to 14 hours. Uh, so that means you have a lot more time to grab your stuff before it goes to dead, which is nice. And uh, yeah, with all this stuff, we've actually had the uh, screen effects have been redone. And uh, so the old is on this side and the new is on this side. And I mean, 
you can really see the difference there and uh, these are just a couple examples and you'll really see it in game you can really see it here with the blood one uh, way less so much much nicer now and uh, this is something a lot of people have really been asking for because it just really obscured vision too much and I think this is a really beautiful change then there's been a bunch of performance stuff that they're working on and still working on so one of the things that they want to do is reduce server-side entity counts and they've been working on that quite a bit one of the big things um, were syringes and bandages uh, those kind of items didn't really need an entity when they're in an inventory and that was eating up a bunch of stuff you can really read through the details here but they've done some great optimizations there same thing with the industrial pipes and so forth the whole industrial system can be pretty taxing and uh, they basically figured out there was some issues there through people making more advanced machinery and uh, that helped them track down some stuff and improve performance with the industrial system which is nice then they've just done some straight up memory optimizations which you can read about there yourself they've done some texture improvements and it's kind of hard to see but you can really the longer you stare at this one it just does look better which is really nice of course this also is uh, one of those things that can help with performance and uh, we showed you the marker for death but team markers were always kind of buggy with night vision goggles that should be fixed now and one last nice thing gates shouldn't be crushing your cars as often as they did or, or launching them uh, there should be better canceling and uh, detection going on there so everyone that pretty much does it and uh, yeah it's nice to see some optimizations some future stuff coming for the guns and some you know small it seems like change but this is really a big thing that a lot of people have asked for so that's i'd say a really nice positive step in the right direction some people might not be super excited about the metal detector but i know backpacks are definitely a huge one for most people so there it is everyone thanks for watching stay rusty and have a good one Thank you.